Hi all. We're going to do some more PowerShell. Uh -oh. First I want to read a joke here. Uh, World's Book of Best Jokes. There's a section here on old maids. Uh, real, real old book. Let's see here. I think it's uh, 19... 1943. Been around a while, huh? Okay, it says it's a old maid. She's calling her janitor. It says, is this the janitor speaking? Then the janitor replies, yes, miss. What do you want? And uh, she replies, I just found two strange men in my apartment, and I want you to throw one of them out. <laughs> okay, uh, I've got this file here. Uh, it's got about, uh, it's got 13 items here. Uh, Let's open up PowerShell and we'll go down to the C drive. This guy here, this is how you move back two folders in case you haven't seen that type of thing. So CD space dot dot forward slash dot dot. And that'll move you back two folders. Okay, so we'll do a get children here. We've seen this one before. Get children on C colon. Okay, and it prints off the files on C folder. Uh, this uh, This mode thing, it tells what type of file it is. D means directory or folder. It's just a fancy name for folder, D. A is for archive. It's just a file. Read only file, you know, you, you can't change it. Hidden files, system files, uh, sometimes Windows, Microsoft Windows will hide files so we can't see it. Uh, reparse point, symbolic links, that's a fancy way that Windows handles files. It, it links to certain files. This is basically the same thing here, but we're using the force on C colon. And you can see now it shows a lot more files showing all the hidden files and things that we didn't see in the pre in the previous one. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do with get child items. There's something called regular expressions. Regex. It's, it's just pattern matching. So here I'll run one and you'll you'll see what it does <clears throat> so here we're going to get child item grab all the files with force on C colon and only print out the files that start with a W and anything after it so you can see it grab two files W they start with a W and the star means match anything after it. So that's what they mean by a regular expression. So I just put together a few simple ones here just to give you a general idea of what the stuff is. Here we're saying match both B and W and anything after it. 
So you can see how it caught windows, windows here, and boot. So match B or a W, and then the asterisk means anything after it. So in general, these uh, regular expressions, it's a pretty tough topic. You know, you could have a whole a whole 15 week course on stuff like that so at least at least a whole chapter you know it, it can de definitely get tricky and there's all kind of weird characters that you can add to it so so I just have a few more here child item on C colon here's a pipe we can pipe it to format list and you can see it uh, it printed out the same items but uh, it just put them in a different layout so gave us some more information uh, what you can do with that is then pipe that pipe that to more and then you'll see a page at a time you see down here at the bottom it says more and then you hit the enter key to go one line at, at a time for a space bar to move a screen at a time Here we're going to specify a path. So get child item and go to this path. The path is C colon in the PS folder. So it printed out that there's one folder, two text files. curse so we're going to get child item on the path the, the path is go to this folder on C colon into the PS folder and then we're going to include the text files dot txt would be a text file a notepad file and the star means match any characters match any name and recurse means go into the folders. So here I'll run it and you'll see what it does. So you can see it went into the one folder. Up here it only said hey you hit, there's a folder here that says one. But when we included the recurse it, uh, it went into the folder and printed out what's in there and then down here PS folder it printed out both things both files now we only said to include text files so if, if, if we go to the PS folder here go into the one folder you can see it, it didn't include this script. There's a PS1 script here. It showed us this file here, the text file, but it didn't print out the script because we said only include the text file. Okay, so get child items, get all the items inside the folder at this path. The path is C colon PS folder. That's this PS folder here. And include only the text files. Star is just a fancy way to match all characters. 
they call it a wild card. And then recurse, recurse means go into the folder. So it recursed into the one folder, printed out the text file, but it didn't print out this file here. Okay, now uh, this command here, I've got the same thing here. Now, I personally, I would like to set that into an alias. You know, set alias. Here's my alias list, and here's the command, right? Seems like it would work, right? But that type of thing won't work. Uh, uh, set alias won't accept long, long strings. Okay, so how do we get around that, right? That's where functions come in. Okay, so first we'll get help on function, and let's go ahead and pipe that to more, just in case it turns out to be long. Okay, so function provides access to the function defined in Windows PowerShell. The Windows PowerShell function provider lets you get, add, change, clear, and delete the functions and filters in Windows PowerShell. A function is a name block of code. That's what I wanted you to see. A function is a named block of code that performs an action. That's the line there. A function is a named a named block. You write a function, and you give it a name, and that function does something. Okay? So that is pretty long, huh? Okay. So function is just a handful of commandlets and other code bunched together. You bunch them together inside these brackets. You open, you open a function with this one, you close a function with this one. It's just a, it's just a block of code. Okay, so Normally you create a function inside of a file. You, know, you have a text file, a script, and, and you put that function inside of a script. But here you can put it right on the command line, so we'll start here. So we create a function by starting it with the word function. We give it a name here. And then this is our this is our function. One line, you know, write host, send this text to the screen. So okay, so we're creating a function, the name my func, and it's gonna write this text to the screen. Okay, so that functions in memory. Okay, so then if, if we want to run it, then you just type the name of the function here, my func. So you can name them anything you want. You know, I usually start things with my, so I know it's not going to conflict with anything inside the system. You know. Okay, and this is the same thing, but we have two strings of text here, separated by a comma. Okay, 
and uh, what's odd is that when we created that one by the same name it wrote right over the previous one without some type of error you know, you'd think it would have said hey you're gonna you're gonna mess up the other function you know you're gonna write over the other function but it just wrote right over it and uh, the other thing is we have a string of text here but it put it on two separate lines normally in most programming languages you got to put some type of carriage return here you know you have to force it to go down to the next line but just by putting that comma here it sent it down to the second line okay so those are just two silly ones uh, here we, we have a function called my funk and we put a commandlet inside of it okay now that one's kind of silly you know because why didn't we just type this out well where it would really come into play is if you wanted to do longer things so like here you know we have a long get child item in the path and we can create the function and then call it with just one word we call the function call it c-a-l-l -L, or we run it so we can run the function with uh, we run the function by just using the name this is the name of the function and then this is the other one this is the uh, last one here so th this is the one I tried to put into the alias right it wouldn't let me put it inside of an alias but I can put it inside of a function and then use that one name to run it So there's definitely a lot more to functions and uh, we'll do some in the next video when we go over profiles and uh, they really come into play when we get into the scripting so okay see ya bye